Okay, this is a quick video on determining about how to set up these axes when it comes to bending. Let's say you have a column and you're going to apply a load to it like this. Well, most likely right now, if you didn't know what the cross section would look like, you couldn't tell whether or not the beam would bend like this or the beam would bend in and out of the paper. So what you do is you just cut the beam somewhere and we're going to look straight down on it like this. When I do, I, I drew the cross section to look this way. So if that's the case, then the, the beam is going to want to bend around where the moment inertia is the smallest. So usually what you do is you set up this as x, and this is going to be the y-axis, this being the centroid of the piece itself. Now if you take the moment inertia, when you do 1 12th times base times height cubed, is the inertia, remember that moment inertia is around the centroid, so it's always around this axis here. So if I let this distance here be my base, this be my height cubed, then my moment inertia is going to be around the y axis, because this beam obviously is going to bend back and forth this way. So it's going to want to basically, this axis, basically this axis is going to want to move out, or you know, I can say I'm going to bend around that axis. <clears throat> Now, if I'm going to find the uh, moment inertia around the x-axis, again, I'm going to do 1 12th base times height. This is my base. This is going to be my height. So it's, it would say it would want to bend around here. Obviously, the moment inertia is going to be bigger around the x-axis than it's going to be around the y-axis. So since the moment inertia is going to be bigger, then I would only use the y-axis here. I hope that makes sense there. So again, all you do is cut it down, look at it this way. If you have a, a smaller moment of rush, inertia around there, just take your moment of inertia around the Y and then calculate it. Now when it comes to a beam that's being bent, well, what happens? Something like that. Well, obviously it's going to do something kind of like this, bend down like that. Obviously here it's going to be in the middle. So again, you do the same thing. You just cut the beam right through the middle. You look at it this way, like this. Look at the cross section and I'll just make a beam up, and again, we don't know what it looks like. Maybe it looks something like that if I look into it. If it does, then draw your axis through here and through here. And usually what happens, you make this X, you make this Y, and this would be in the centroid of the axis itself. And then when you're doing bending stress for something like that, you're going to do MC over I. And when you calculate the moment inertia around something square, it'd be 1 12th times my base times my height cubed. Again, this would be my base. This would be my height. But again, when you're doing this moment inertia here, you're finding about the x-axis because it's about this point right here. If I find around the y, there'd be no reason, there'd be no reason to find the y anyway because the y, is, I don't have a force going in and out of the paper that's causing bending here. So I would only use this value here, and we'd find out, we call this x, I'd find out what the moment's going to be applied here. And my c value, in this case, would be the distance from here to this outer fiber. The moment inertia, again, would be around the x-axis. And that's it. That's all you're going to do to do that. Hope that clarified it. If not, please let me know.